It's the Social Oddities Podcast, coming at you from five parts of the UK, all for one reason, the amazing world of wrestling. I've never seen a crowd so fired up, JR. They know what's coming next. They can't wait to get started, and neither can I. Welcome, everybody, to episode 10 of the Social Oddities Podcast. I'm joined by, uh, as always, by Rach, Chris... Kev and Adam, full house again. Say hello, everyone. Hello. This is getting too regular now. Hello. It's very weird, isn't it? It's very <laughs> weird to have Adam here. Well, is that yeah. three in a row for you? Uh, I think it is, yeah. yeah. It's a new record. Is this, Sorry, is this your you longest got, streak? It is. I feel like The Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> Not that so I'm this dead. Is, uh, this is our special 10th our 10th anniversary episode. So we've managed to, to last to episode 10. So we should get some c- congratulations for that. And uh, I think uh, last week, obviously, we were a bit negative about Raw and SmackDown. So this week, we're going to try and uh, talk about that a lot less and focus on <laughs> on the on the UK Indies, which I think is going to be a lot more positive. Because so, the UK uh, Indies is fucking awesome. Exactly. So I was going to, um, we all went to a couple of shows this uh, this week, this weekend. So um, myself and Rach went to Norwich for the UK the UK Championship. And I think, Chris, you were there both nights as well, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, I was there too. So that was really good. You went to a few um, ICW staff, and we went to Raw and SmackDown, which we'll briefly mention as well. Anybody else go to anything uh, over the next over the last few weeks? I went to a working men's club, and it was amazing. <laughs> we'll definitely get back to that in a minute. Was that was that for wrestling or just just for a night out? Um, a little bit of both. Okay. Um, it was more more alcohol than wrestling. I think I saw, but yeah, it was it was all right. To be fair, we've seen the pictures. You needed alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it was it was it was all right. It was for charity, which I didn't know. But that's so, fair enough then. Oh. Yeah, well, we'll get to that in a minute. I think um, myself and Rachel went to IPW as well in, uh, was it Clapham or Clapham, Croydon? Yeah. Somewhere rubbish. No, Clapham, it? not Croydon. Clapham. Okay. Clapham. <laughs> yeah. You um, have all had a good. I've got nothing until Friday. Well, we've just offended all the people of Clapham. And Croydon as well. And, yeah, somewhere. Yeah. What do you mean? Why have you offended them? Stop being weird. He said it was just somewhere. <laughs> he said it was somewhere crappy. It wasn't the best place, but we, we should that. get to that in a bit. So, um, yeah, I think we should uh, kick this off with, uh, well, probably, it's probably best to do this in, in date order, isn't it? So, uh, so Chris, I think you went to see ICW um, a couple well, of weeks ago now, wasn't it? Technically, if you're doing an order, IPW was before then, mine, so. IPW was first, was it? It was. Mm-hmm. Oh, we should ask. I was uh, we in the ask. afternoon. Oh, yeah, same, so day. We should, uh, same day. We should, get, we should get Rach's, uh, Rach's view on IPW then, probably the... Uh, the smallest indie show I've, I've ever been to. Can I, <laughs> so small. <laughs> very strange building as well. I just want to thank Rach for getting my um, Nixon Yule picture as well. Hey. Kind of it's it worth mentioning hat. now that Rach has got a, uh, well, Pete Dunn has had to get a restraining order taken out against Rach because she's, uh, <laughs> she's seen him, is it three times in a week now? <laughs> How many times, times have you seen him? Less than two weeks I've seen Pete Dunn now. To the point where he said hi again at Norwich. <laughs> That's not good. It, it makes a change. Really? That, um, somebody's got to get a restraining order out against Rach instead of Rach getting a restraining order against somebody else. That is true. That is sly. That was below the belt. <laughs> so, Rach, apart from Pete Dunn, obviously you saw Pete Dunn before IPW. What did you make of the show? Oh, was great. I mean, that was the first time I saw Matt Riddle. I thought he was good. I've not seen him wrestle before. His match with Pete Dunn was brilliant. Um, so just so we're clear, did you enjoy his match or did you enjoy him? <laughs> I enjoyed I enjoyed the whole match. There was definitely like, yeah, lots to look at in that match. But no, it was a good match. You have to, it was a bit quiet to start with. Um, Riddle did is, really pick up. Riddle is quality. He's a great wrestler. And I think yeah, because... I've not seen him wrestle before. Because he's got his UFC background, he's not scared to get hit. He was, he was pretty good. stiff. He wrestled he? twice as well. So speaking of Nixon Newell, Rach, what did you think of her match with Joey Ryan? Oh, God. He he makes me cringe, but I quite like it. I don't even know why. He said Joey, Ryan, he said Joey Ryan, not himself. No, Joey Ryan. <laughs> All right, just it, I don't know what it is. It's definitely, it's definitely a good gimmick. You do get quite invested into it. But that was quite a fun match to watch. Joey Ryan seems to be going around the world wrestling women at the minute, doesn't he? Is that his thing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> to be fair, if I can make a living out of that as well, then why not? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was making get... the most of it, wasn't he? You did try that, Chris, but he kept getting arrested. 
well, you know, I'm, I'm out now, so it's been it's been a few months. <laughs> so, so Chris, you're gonna have to explain some of these nicknames to me. So, obviously, Jerry Ryan's the uh, the king of dong style. So, I think we probably have a guess at that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Nixon Yule, I haven't seen an awful lot of her. So, her apparently her nickname, the girl with the shiniest wizard. So, mm-hmm. you might have to explain that. That sounds like a massive euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> well, your sinister laugh doesn't help. <laughs> it's just basically a play on our, our finisher, which is the Shining Wizard. So, okay, fair she's enough. shiniest of them all. So. Uh, so, I think this was her last match in the UK ever. That's what it was billed as. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's true, but uh, yeah, she did a bit of a. Obviously, it was, it was her against Joey Ryan for the title that I can never re- remember the name of because it goes on for about ten minutes. The Iron the... Man Heavy Metal Weight Title. That <laughs> one. That's the fella. Yeah, that's the one. So, um, yeah, as it was billed as her last match ever, I thought she'd obviously lose the match. But, yeah, she actually won the title. So I'm not quite sure what the plans are for her going forward. That's OK. She she probably lost it backstage or something like that. They always do something okay. good. But she, aye. Um, so like, like we mentioned last last week, I, I assume she's off to uh, NXT now. Yeah, I think she'll be going to the women's um, tournament first. Um, maybe something else from there. But, yeah. So, um, so Rich, what was, your, what was your standout match then of the... Uh, of the, of the IPW show, what's the, what was your one take-home great match? Who are you asking, me or Chris? Yeah, sorry, when, when I said Rachel, I was kind of referring to you. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you say Chris. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's definitely, it was definitely Matt Riddle versus Pete Dunne, but I did quite enjoy the Jimmy Havoc match with Tommy Dreamer. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. You could tell there was quite a lot of respect between the two of them. I quite enjoyed that. It's, but, a, bit, it's, yeah. a, bit like, it's a bit like old school versus new school, those two, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It was good. It was very, very slow to start, though. You were just waiting for the whole, like, extreme thing to come. It didn't take long, but it did drag a little bit. But for wrestling, it was definitely Pete, Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle for me. That was the highlight. So, I really enjoyed that. I think yeah. you know what you're going to get with Havoc and Dreamer. You know you know, you know what, what match is going to be straight away. It was a good it's match, good. though. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of weapons used, I'm guessing. Yeah, pretty much. It was just, uh, it wasn't, I've seen a few more, you know, I've seen more matches that are more hardcore, but it was... It was fairly tame, but you know they they had um, was it Lego they got out? It wasn't um, some tax, was it? Was it was it bits of Lego or was that in the Joey Ryan match? That was the Joey Ryan match. Yeah, Nixon Null got that out. I think maybe, maybe Howard yeah. and Dreamer was uh, was the was the some tax then, but it was kind of you know they 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 did a few bits and pieces, but Dreamer has always looked old and beat up, like pretty much as soon as he debuted, doesn't he? So he hasn't really changed. <laughs> <laughs> Can I sh- Damien, Damien, do you actually watch any matches when you're there? Yeah, my memory's not the best. Well, yeah, no, but you'd remember something like that, surely. <laughs> like, yeah, I think there's, there's a couple of matches that had sort of weapons and sort of bags of thumbtacks or Lego bits and stuff. I couldn't quite remember which one I had, but it's so gummy bears. Lego, though. Have you ever stood on Lego? Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Lego on a plug. I mean, stand <laughs> on a plug. Oh, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> And obviously, this was the event that um, this was a, 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 the event that X Pac was going to show up to. So obviously, he's had a, a couple of problems getting into the UK recently for for various reasons. So he was a bit of a no show in that I one. Think it was so more um, getting out of the USA. Eh? I think yeah. so. I think it's probably you know getting out of bed and you know waking up in the morning was probably his main his main concern there. <laughs> but, uh, I, I did I did I did listen to him afterwards on a podcast, and he was saying basically that he's going to be innocent and all this. And I, I kind of do believe him because he didn't come across like he were on something. And um, they never actually tested what was in his thing, did they? Until afterwards. And I don't know if the results have come out yet. Well, he, he was saying he was in the best shape of his life. And, you know, a yeah. couple of guys in the crowd were looking forward to seeing him. It, it was a really strange event for him to be at, to be fair. He didn't really fit in. Mm. Yeah. It was a bit of a strange event. But, uh, I, yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to be invited back to, to the to IPW anytime soon. No. Well. I think he has been over quite a bit, hasn't he, in the last few years, to like PCW and things like that. Yeah, he's done a good bit over here, but nothing like standout ICW, things like that. Mm. You know, I thought IPW was, you know, a decent local indie show. There was, you know, no major standout match. Pete Dunne is always great. Um, pretty small, small crowd and small venue, but it was good fun. Fair, you know, was it a smaller venue as? The one you went to in Bristol, the ICW one, that was literally a, a shed. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, well, it wasn't far off, actually. It was like a nicer shed. Right. <laughs> well, to be fair, it's, it's a shed in London, so it's going to be nicer. <laughs> yeah, had a few seats here and there, but 
it was actually it was like a theater it was like it was a it was a club it was an old theater and into a club yeah it was like the stage or the ring was it was like right at the front and then all the seats went up as like a like a theater stands so the seats didn't go didn't go all the way around it was like just on one side it was was a bit of a weird layout but uh it it worked pretty well it was good fun it was good enjoyed it so uh, so rushed off off to chris yeah Yeah. so how was your icw in uh showing in comparison it was fucking awesome such a good fucking show so was it a house show or was it a, a no, televised it was, show? Or? It was TV tapings. So they'd done two TV tapings. Um, the first of which has already been on ICW On Demand already. Um, and the second one, which is going to be main evented by Joe Goffey versus Pete Dunne, which is a fucking awesome match. Um, sorry, I'm just swearing now, but still, it was it was really fucking good. Um, but on the first one, they had um, BT Gun versus Tyler Bate, which was really good. What you'd really expect from these guys, I would, I would say. Um, BT Guns was at the um, WWE thing down in London doing a tryout as well, so that's pretty good for him. Um, they had Wolfgang versus Jack Jester on the first night as well, or, or in the first TV taping. Um, Stevie Boy versus Jordan Devlin, so that was another good match. Um, going back to the Wolfgang match, the, <laughs> you just you know what you're going to get with Wolfgang and Jack Jester's. You're going to get some weapons. It's a good match with Wolfgang. He's getting quite a big well quite a lot of exposure in the UK championship things as well so um, yeah I'm a big fan of Wolfgang people might know that um, the one with Stevie Boy and Jordan Devil was really good as well because they're, they're, they've got Mikey Whiplash back as well so they've got a story where Mikey Whiplash is going to going a feud with Stevie Boy oh, I saw that didn't he come out of the ring he, um, yeah there's, he, came, he came like his minions if you want to call them anything came from each side of the ring and cornered Stevie Boy Stevie Boy beat them off um, and like got them out of the ring. That that sounded wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Stevie Boy, I'm just painting you in a different picture, you pal. Um, <laughs> so eventually, when Stevie got rid of all the guys who were trying to attack him, and Mikey Whiplash was outside the ring and cut like a promo, and like he's basically trying to reform le- the, the Legion faction, which is really cool. Um, if you watch back the on-demand thing, you can actually see me in the front row on that one as well. So, um, so claim to fame. Um, but from from behind, I know from behind Stevie Boy was like a guy appeared and was, had a, a like the white mask on and had writing that everybody kind of knew it was going to be Chris Renfrew. So it was like we are Legion and we are many. He took his mask off and the place went fucking bonkers for Chris Renfrew. Um, so they've got a, they've got a big history like Renfrew and Mikey Whiplash when the NAK were feuding with Legion like a year and a half ago or something like that. So it's I'm really interested to see where they go with that as well. So um, and the main event was for the first night and anyway, it was Coach and DCT versus the Wee Man and Davy Blaze. Um, how did how did how did Jonathan Coachman come across in his return to the ring? <laughs> <laughs> Not that coach. <laughs> All right. Um, but it, it, that match kind of broke down and um, we had Kayla Ray came out and helped the wee man and Davy Blaze. Then Viper came out and tried to help coach in DCT and Viper ends up getting powerbombed from the ring through a table on the outside through DCT. Quite a big bump, really, for well both Viper and for DCT to take as well. So, um, But that was, looked really impressive, though. So, yeah, that was the first taping, which was really good. But going on to the second taping, they had um, the Kings of Catch, which was Lee, uh, sorry, Lewis Garvin um, and Aspen Faith against Poland Promotions, which was quite a good match. Um, Kayleigh Ray versus the Session Moth Martino. One of, one of our favourites. Yeah, yeah. I've never even seen a wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they've done, they done like a little... A little skit after that match had finished. Martina went, beats Kaylee Ray. Spoilers for anybody that's listening, by the way. Um, Martina beats her and gets a, a number one contendership. So she's now got Kaylee Ray at the next set of TV tapings, which is the end of this month. But they're doing it in a five round Scottish rules match. Is which, that why you drink as much iron brew as you can? <laughs> it's it's, it's basically us at each other. It's like <laughs> five. It's like five three minute rounds, and you've got to take a take a drink and a shot between each round. Right. A vine brew? No, alcohol. Alright. Uh, uh, just, just when you thought ICW couldn't get any, any more Scottish. 
<laughs> if you're gonna give if you're gonna give Keely Ray some fucking iron brew, then that's like spinach to a Scottish person. So, um, but yeah, so they, they done like a little thing after that where I, if you guys know who um, Ravy Davy is, Kev, you I think you've probably seen Ravy Davy. <laughs> yeah, I've seen him. <laughs> um, he he comes out and like wearing a track wearing a tracksuit and a Burberry cap. Um, with like a, it's like a string sports. GD Sports, bag. isn't it? Yeah, GD Sports. But for anybody that doesn't know GD Sports, it's just a string sports bag that's got like four cans in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he comes out and he gives Martino a can, and she's like, "That's my can." Um, and they have an argument who's who's cans who's. Um, then he gets down on one knee and proposes to Martino. Whoa, 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 whoa! Uh, it gets it gets even worse. <laughs> um. He gets down on one knee, proposes to Martina, but he can't find his, the ring that he got her. Please tell me it was a Harry Bow ring. No, 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 no. It, get, it gets worse. Oh. So she goes, <laughs> so session with Martina, as she does, she goes down in her pants and she pulls out a condom, <laughs> bites, bites the condom off and takes the ring off the condom, gives it to, Dave, to Davey, um, and Davey then proposes with the ring of a condom. Brilliant. <laughs> Welcome to ICW. <laughs> that was pretty much God. the uh, the first rehearsal of the uh, of the Cena Nikki Belly proposal, wasn't it? It was more. Sounds it, was <laughs> it was definitely more than <laughs> anyway. I'll give them that much. But um, yeah, the main, the main event of the whole night was um, Joe Coffey versus Pete Dunne, and that match was just it was a really fucking good match. Really, really um, aggressive and physical and. Goes out into the crowd. There was one point where, kind of like what you what we seen in Manchester actually, when um, I think it was El Ligero was used used somebody's um, wheelchair to kick. Was it Nathan Cruz? Yeah, yeah. And what we seen? Um, well, they were picking guys up in the crowd and um, running into them with them. So like, he picked up somebody in the crowd and made made them give them a big boot or a drop kick or if the guy was too big, there was one guy who picked up Pete Dunn and made and ran into Joe Coffee with Pete Dunn. So they were, they were doing that kind of stuff as well, but it was um, there was a point where Joe Coffey tried to feed Pete Dunn a raw steak, so the crowd are chanting, "He is vegan," <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty funny as well. But um, so has anybody in here actually seen a bad Pete Dunn match? No. no, no, no. He's just he's so good. But yeah, the show was really good. Um, anybody that's not been to see, and I'm, I'm going to obviously champion ICW being the Scottish guy, but. If anybody's not seen ICW and you can get along an ICW show, highly recommend it. It's a good night. Crowds, crowds, I think awesome nine times out of ten. So, like, like we said on that, that earlier podcast, I went to see him in Leeds and I thought the crowd was dead. And I think you said it in Bristol, it wasn't great, Damien. I think but it's I think, obviously a lot better in there. Yeah, crowd, yeah. But that's what yeah. I'm gonna say. I think if you should go, you should go to one in Scotland. Yeah. Even the one in Newcastle that we went to care as well. Yeah, the, the the one in Newcastle had quite a few. From Scotland, come down for it. But to be fair, that so, was one of the one of ICW's big shows because they've got they've got their their big four, if you want to call it that. Um, so you've got the Square Go, you've got Shug's Who's Party, you've got Fear and Loathing, um, and the other ones fucking escaped me now. Well, <laughs> this is knowledge where ICW has failed. <laughs> well, we know what the uh, right. Ask Chris Anything question is going to be later. <laughs> the, oracle, the oracle has failed us. <laughs> yeah, and I think definitely we'll recommend ICW um, up in Scotland. So, uh, so Chris, for the for the so, the yeah, new fans to, get to ICW, to ICW, yeah, yeah, I was going to say they obviously they'll be aware of people like Pete Dunne, people that are now making their way towards WWE. Oh, so, who one ma- one match I never mentioned actually, which I thought was really good as well. Um, they had Kenny Williams against Matt Cross, um, a friend of the show. Uh, <laughs> Maybe, um, but that was a really good match as well. They they just kind of laid everything out there. They're flying all over all over the place, and um, yeah, that was a really good match too. I just wanted to put that in there as well. Who would you recommend as somebody to keep their eye on, like somebody that hasn't yet made it to sort of WWE or hasn't yet made it onto any sort of network shows that might make it over the next year or two? Is there anybody that people can go to ICW and I'm, see I'm always star a- of the future? I'm always a big fan of BT Gun, but he's been about for a while. So, well, he's, I say a while. He's, he's 31 years old, so he's still young enough to go further than what he is. But I'd say Stevie Boy. I was going to say you mentioned the name there as well, Kenny Williams. Kenny Williams is good as well, but I'd say Stevie Boy. He's got more of a more of an attitude about him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, plus with Kenny Williams, like we said before, 
I think if he goes to a main like WWE, his gimmick will have to change anyway. But I'm I'm a big fan of Stevie Boy, um, and he's he's only 24 as well, so he's got a long way to go. He's got time on his side. Is he actually uh, 20, 24? Yeah. Fucking hell, he's had a long paper round. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's uh, I'm a big fan of Stevie Boy. Um, plays a plays a very good heel as well. And if they bring bring Kaylee Ray along with them as well and just join up the filthy generation in WWE, that'd be pretty cool. Speaking of WWE, then we uh, we move on to their local or to their that to their recent UK tapings in, in Norwich. Segway, segway, that's <laughs> pretty good, wasn't it? See, I'm a pro at this now. Yeah, smooth. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, moving on to their Norwich tapings. Um, so obviously, myself, Rachel, and Chris attended both both days. Um, so yeah, obviously, uh, Chris and Rach going to to both both nights like me. What did you think of the first night? Um, there's been a lot of talk that the crowd for an English crowd oh, were really quiet. It's a lot it quieter was than Blackpool. Weird. I'll be honest and say I thought the first night was off. I've, I've said that to you guys. Yeah, you did. I, say, I said that uh, there was something missing from the first night for me at mm. least. Um, so but, you know, quite a few Blackpool, people said that as well though on the way out when we was leaving and we bumped into some people. They were saying that. Yeah. It was a bit flatter than what people were expecting. Yeah. I just, I think as well with the first night, people didn't know what the actual point of it was. Mm. But the second night, they announced obviously um, that they were going to have a night like the WWE UK Championship title match. They, were, they announced that there was going to be a, a number one contender match. So you went into the second night with a purpose. Like yeah. It, it made it, there was something on the line at least for the second night. The first night there really wasn't. It was just a. It was like a showcase. This effect, yeah. To call it a bit of context, like then a, these uh, these shows, a, it's like a televised house show if you want to call it something. Yeah, I was gonna say as a bit of context, these these shows were being taped for the new UK show on the network. I guess I'm not even sure what the details are, but they're obviously taping some sort of weekly or monthly show featuring the UK guys on on the network. So this was the first one of those tapings, but yeah, they didn't really explain what it was, whether it was going to be a tournament again, whether it was just going to be random matches. Yeah, they didn't really explain what was going on. So people were sort of waiting for something to happen and sort of nothing happened. It was just a bunch of matches. Mm, it just took a little while to get into it. But I mean, some of the matches were really, really good. But oh, it, just took a bit of, yeah. it just took a while to understand. Because even when Regal came out and kind of announced what was coming, even his message was slightly confusing as to what actually <laughs> was going to be happening. Um I don't, know. I don't know if it card, was the crowd. Then. Quickly run down mm. the card for the first night. There was Mark Andrews and James Drake. Um, lots there was of Jesus every, chance. Lots of Jesus chance for James Drake, yeah. But speaking of the actual Jesus, Saxon Huxley lots of was Jesus in the second Jesus chance, and in general, it was just pure Jesus chance. <laughs> it was bizarre. And that, what was the what other one? Dan! Alan Dan! Oh, Dan. Dan! Dan! For Dan Maloney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously this being in Norwich, the home of, of Alan Partridge, the Americans didn't get this at all. But whenever Dan Maloney was there, the whole crowd just chanted Dan continuously for the whole match. And the Maloney... whole match, from the minute he walked out <laughs> to the backstage. Even in the next match, they were shouting Dan. Did uh, did James Drake not have his ass on his, uh, his face? He did. He's had his whole he... face on his ass. <laughs> he a, did, big, yeah. uh, a big question for all of you. Who is the real Jesus? Is it James Drake or is it Saxon Huxley? It was Saxon Huxley in Blackpool. Yeah. So when Saxon came out this time, he got a actual Jesus chant. So, uh, <laughs> I think James Drake is the fake Jesus. So it's, it's good that we've cleared that up. Yeah, well, thank they, you for they, that. Those chants got a bit old, though, quickly. Yeah. They did, to be completely honest. Um, not to be too fucking negative or nothing, but they just they they did. And then the, sat one, like, the next one after that, when Sam Gradwell comes out and they're, sh- they're chanting "Baldy Jesus," it's like give it a fucking rest. Mm. See, I was, I was saying this to Rach, and I think I said it to you as well that it felt like the first night Norwich was trying to be like Blackpool. I mean, they they mm. saw how black they saw how well Blackpool worked, and they were trying to like they were well, sort they of tried- chanting for themselves. You know, they tried to make like make themselves the the story. Yeah. They tried to show how good and funny they were and it just didn't work yeah mm. I, i'd agree with that actually they, they were trying in this occasion they were trying to get themselves over yeah um a slight shame it took away from the matches a little bit but a couple yeah, of matches were really good because one, one match good. yeah um mark andrews james drake i thought was pretty decent actually so you, it maybe started a bit slow but when mark andrews started like getting warmed up and started flying about the place people got more into it i think mm-hmm. um 
So well, yeah, I was, was going to ask you a quick question. Like, if we assume this is going to be a regular UK thing, maybe weekly, maybe you know, a couple of weeks before some big NXT events or, or whatever they, they're going to do with it. Yeah, because they're not think... really announced what they're actually doing with this. No, so we're just having a guess here. They might do a weekly show of some kind. But and I think the the rumour is they're going to travel around the country. So they'll do a series of tapings in Norwich, you know, Manchester, London, whatever. Do you think that could work? Or do you think whenever they go to a new city, the first night or two, it would just be the crowd trying to, you know, prove they're better than the other city? Do you think they should probably pick one location and stay in it? Like... Well, like, like we'll 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 yeah. We'll but then where's that location? They could do a Manchester or a, or a, or a, a, a sort of Birmingham, a sort of mid part point in the country. But what do you think they should do? Do you think they should travel around or do you think they should have a home? I would say travel around. Especially if they, yeah. if they were to do one tape in a month and they, say they've done like four one-hour tapings one night a month, that would be enough. Because that's pretty much what they do in NXT anyway, isn't it? They, like, they'll take yeah. three or four shows. Then, yeah, but they're going to need to get a lot more UK guys in on that because half the show was cruiserweights. There were so many guys from 205, from 205 Live. There was, Live. what, two or three matches in each show. Yeah, but then the, there's an abundance of UK talent they could they could pick up as well. They could pick up people like Jimmy Havoc, who's already, so already done matches for them. At so that's what I mean. If they travel around, it opens it up a little bit to bring in, like, hometown guys to sort of that as well. So get the crowd hyped. So if they'd done like a night in Liverpool, they could have, well, maybe not as Zach Gibson because he's going to be on World of the Sport, but that type of guy. Mm. Um, or if they're up in Newcastle, they could bring home people from Newcastle. If they came up to Glasgow, they could use some other ICW guys. Or Yeah, I think that'd be good if they did travel around a lot. That'd be quite, that'd be, that'd be good. But obviously, uh, yeah. they had a bunch of UK guys on this show. There's obviously a lot of guys missing. So you mentioned Jimmy Havoc. Why do you think they haven't really picked him up yet? Because yeah, he was at Access for a little bit, but he hasn't been on any of these UK tournaments in Blackpool, the UK tapings. Why do you think they're sort of overlooking a couple of guys? Because Havoc's pretty much a main guy in a bunch of promotions that he's in. He's, I don't know. I think he's fucking. I think Jimmy Havoc's great. Yeah. yeah. He's maybe just not got the style that they want. Yeah, I think they're looking for actual. I mean, I don't know how to say this without sounding like disrespectful but i think they're looking for proper wrestlers and i don't think yeah. they, i don't think they see him as a proper wrestler but jimmy havoc can wrestle oh yeah yeah they did that thing with progress where yeah you know where they were trying to book jimmy havoc because the first of all said he couldn't wrestle so he did all the tapes were showing he could and he is a great wrestler but i just don't think they see him as a proper wrestler yeah yeah unfortunately but he is he is good he's got all the talent in the world um to go there and do something and be popular or more popular than what he already is because he's really popular already. So, um, but then you could you could use guys like Haskins or something as well, couldn't they? So, I think there's something about Haskins that they don't, that's why they haven't signed him. I know he had his uh, injury issues and that he collapsed. I don't know if that's something to do with it or not. Mm-hmm. So. Be interesting. It's interesting to see. Let's put it this way: but the UK scene's in a great place now, isn't it? Just there's that many there's that many promotions that are really doing well. So, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to see what they do in the next. Six months to a year, see where they are. I just hope WWE aren't going to fuck them all up. <laughs> hopefully not. Mm-hmm. But hopefully then being affiliated with WWE brings more eyes to that product as well. So on on the flip side. Yeah. So but we'll see what happens. Like I said, six months to a year, we can have a look back and say this was a great idea or this was a bad idea, but we don't know yet. So we don't know what's going to happen. So Chris, what do you make of uh, Tyler Bate as the, uh, the poster boy of the UK, basically, for WWE? Because... They've obviously got Pete Dunne. They've got Trent Seven. They've Black got Mark Pool. Andrews. Blackpool made Tyler Bate the face of this. Just yeah. the way the, cr- the crowd reacted to him in Blackpool. So do you That's think he was a good choice? I think, they, I think they changed it in Blackpool because I think yeah. Trent was due to win it. But they've seen the reaction. That Tyler, well, this is what I've heard as well. Um, like Trent was due to win it, but the reaction that Tyler was getting made them change their mind and go with Tyler instead. Do you really think Trent was going to win it, do you? That's what I've heard. Because I think I, I heard money that Pete on Dunne... Trent at the start of the uh, start of the programs. Sorry. I have my money on Trent at the start of the programs. Yeah, so did I, Kev. Actually, I thought it, he was going to have it, and yeah, yeah, I definitely did. It was only halfway through that I suddenly thought, you know, Tyler Bate was going to have it, but yeah, my money was on Trent. To be fair, I thought Trent was going to win it in Blackpool, mm. but like I said, the, the reactions that Tyler was getting, I, I think that kind of forced him to put it on Tyler. 
Not that he's a bad choice. I think he's great. But and it came from it came from nowhere, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, but Good then book. they'll have an underdog story, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah. So, well, I was, was going to say I haven't really seen much of Tyler Bate before Blackpool. I'd obviously seen Trent Seven, and I'd seen Wolfgang, and I'd seen Pete Dunne, and I hadn't really seen much of Tyler Bate. But these two yeah. nights in Norwich, I became a massive fan of his. I thought yeah. he really stepped it up, and his matches were probably the best two of the nights. Yeah, they definitely were. For, for his age oh, as well, great. phenomenal talent for his age, and yeah. he's only going to get better as well. So, I think the so first... especially the second night. Second night with Mandrews, that was awesome. That was probably the best wrestling match I've ever seen. That was so good. Wrestling. Wrestling. <laughs> that was really good, literally. Like it was a bit slow to start the on the second night, but because they kept doing all the like those whole things and flipping and jumping and stuff, but it was really good when they got going and flippy the hard shit. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, flippy <laughs> shit. It was good. I loved it. I thought it was great life. I thought the crowd were really into it. I thought everything about it just worked. And I thought, I think Tyler Bates changed his look a little bit. He's got a bit more aggressive, which we saw in Norwich, yeah, which I, I quite like as well. I think he needed it. I think he's put he's putting a bit more muscle mass as well since that yeah. show as well. So you think he's bulked up a bit. I actually prefer him without the beard. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's, he needs to be a bit clean cut until he turns. Yeah, so we've so, obviously um, seen progress over the last sort of couple of months. We got a couple of shows coming up as well so with with IC, icw with the uk shows in norwich do you think the uk at the moment is in a better a better place than than the us in terms of just having a watchable show i don't watch much other us wrestling apart from wwe so i can't really comment no i mean in relation, you know, the, the, the in top relation, uk brands seem to be doing better than the top us brands well yeah i mean in relation to just wwe then the uk scene's doing really well just now they're i think they're booked better they're kind of well, obviously not promoted better because WWE's got the machine behind them, but um, there's there's a lot of U, like US indie promotions as well, like ROH, for example, if you want to, they're still an indie promotion. They're, they're always going to do well, especially the fact that they're affiliated with New Japan and that as well, so that's a really big for them as well. So, um, Pro Wrestling, Wrestling Guerrilla evolves doing really well, although they're, they are affiliated with WWE as well. Um, got likes of Shikara and oh, they can, there's lots of different promotions that are doing really well just now, so it's probably a question for Rach and Kev. If location wasn't an issue, it was, it, it was going to happen next to your house, and I said, here's a free ticket, what what promotion would you would you choose to go and watch? Any. Progress. But yeah, so if, if, if you had a Progress show, ICW show, and say say Raw, and I said, here's a free ticket, you can pick one of those three to go to, which one would you pick right now? Right now, Progress. I see that out. I'm Only because gonna, I've not seen progress yet. I'm obviously going to say CW. It's a bit of a damning state. That probably there's not many people I know that, that that would pick Raw right now. And I know we we've been a bit negative about WWE recently. And I think uh, I think we, all of us here, yeah, well, me mainly. Okay, <laughs> mainly me. I and I think, think I don't think it's the fact that we're being negative against WWE is we're being positive against the UK indie scene. Yeah, yeah I, I mean even I Triple H said about that. The thing. Sorry, Kev, go on. I was just going to say that seems to appeal to more adults now, the UK indie scene, rather than the Attitude Era appeal to adults. Mm, this yeah. is PG, family friendly, doesn't sort of thing. Mm. Where the ICW, the Progress, the all the other indie companies do. Obviously, apart yeah. from the think- men's clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, with more UK guys going into WWE... The fans are obviously going to start going to the shows more, watching them more. And the, those fans are probably still going to be chanting the same stuff they always did. They're probably going to be a bit more aggressive and rowdy. Do you think that might eventually end up changing the WWE's product a little bit and making it a bit more, a bit more attitude again, a bit more non-PG? No. You don't reckon? Or at least no, not. they're not going to move away from PG for a long time. Not in their minds, at least. The fans may chant the things that they want to chant, but the product will still be PG or at least the in-ring product and the product that they want to put out there will be PG. What the fans chant in the stands, they've got nothing again, nothing they can do about that. Yeah, I think because now most of it, I think most of the, the merchandise, the sales comes from kids anyway, that's probably why. Yeah, so they're, that's everything's getting aimed towards them. That's why you've got these t-shirts for like cartoon caricatures and things like that. It's aimed at kids. You've, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see them 
being I'd love it if it did happen, but I can't see it. See, I would, obviously I'd the love. the uh, UK show Norwich was obviously uh, set up a match for NXT Takeover, so it's a bit of a big step up now, isn't it, for Pete Dunne and Trent Seven? Oh, sorry, Pete Dunne and, and Tyler Bate, a big mm-hmm. match on NXT. That's going to be so good. That will be, that'll be really good. Probably the first time a lot of the American guys have seen these two. No, but no, the, if, the, if you watch NXT, they've, they've all been in NXT, NXT already. So it's a high, it's the biggest high pro, you know, it's the biggest match for these two guys, isn't it? It's on on a larger scale, obviously. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll, it'll be a really good match. Anybody else? <laughs> I, I know it's going to be good. <laughs> I think it'll be yeah, good. It is. It's definitely going to be a good one. It's definitely going to be <laughs> the, the amount of times they've worked together in the past. They know each other inside mm. and out. Yeah, so the, you know the chemistry that the two of them have got. It's going to be obviously. It's just it's just like when you see uh, Mark Andrews and Pete Dunne, they're like best friends. So you know that's always going to be a shit up match. Yeah, it's, it, well, it's, it's like what like Triple H and Shawn Michaels are the best friends, so they always have a good match. So you always find that the best matches are the people with people that are actually really good friends because they trust each other to do what they want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's really true. Something we're not mentioned by the way. I, I just want to mention this as well. Um, for anybody that watches the UK shows coming up and when they're on on the network, I think they're I think they've got they're obviously going to have to be in the next week or week and a half before takeover. Yeah, the it just cha- makes sense. Yeah, the, the chant um, aimed at aimed at Sam Gradwell because the the Voldemort chant. I don't know if you guys you guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do. Yeah, he's coming for you. He's coming for you, <laughs> Harry Potter. He's coming for you. I, just, <laughs> I fucking loved that. <laughs> was a fucking great chance. Oh, God, that was good. Do you know what, Chris, actually? I forgot to say to you, I that was the first proper match I saw with that Wolfgang guy that you like. And I was really impressed, wasn't I, Damien? I was telling you on the way back. For quite an older guy, yeah. he was good. He he worked hard in that match. Oh, he's 31. Oh, honestly, he did not. He does not look thirty one at all. Very big, <laughs> he looks like a fifty five, Chris. To be honest, yeah, he that's definitely just what happens does when you get brought up in Glasgow, right? Yeah, I was really impressed. Thirty one in I Scottish years. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking, what do you think I look then? Um, <laughs> don't an- don't answer that. No. <laughs> I was just having a drink as you said it. <laughs> 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 I was waiting for Adam to come in and say something to you, cheeky bastard. So w- what direction do you think these UK guys are going to go in there? Do you think Pete Dunne's going to be the champion and they're all going to be chasing him? Because they seem to like having a big face champion, don't they, in Tyler Bay? Yeah, I, th- I still think Pete's going to win it. It's like, like Adam just said, that it makes sense for him to win it now. We're more, more eyes will be on it because it's takeover. So yeah. I think they're going to put Pete Dunne as the face of the UK scene. And he, for me, he's got the biggest the biggest future in everybody that's in the UK scene as well. So it makes sense to have, for him to have the belt. And I think he'll have a quite a long reign with the belt as well. Mm, I so agree. Do you see any yeah. any downsides to him at all? Because he doesn't have the traditional wrestler body. He, you know, his his look isn't traditionally WWE. Do you think? Do you think anything holds him back in that regard? Because he's he's quite a short guy as well, isn't he? Yeah. I was going to say. If anything, in his size. Yeah. yeah what he's done, Shadow? He, exactly that is his size. He, he is literally 205. That, um, and I don't think Vince will push yeah. him. You know, he might get a... If he gets up main roster, he might get a US Championship reign, but... Other I than can, that, I can other still than see him going further than that, to be fair. I just say it's with Vince, you know. It's, but, then, but then again, they maybe look at it and because they're trying to push the UK scene, they might look at it because they gave, like, Different from UK, obviously, but Finn Balor was the Universal Champion. He's what one seventy, one one eighty. Yeah. So there's no yeah, limit. He's got he's got a hell of a look, though, isn't he, Finn Balor? He's got about oh, fourteen six oh, packs got... or whatever. So <laughs> <laughs> Four, fourteen six packs is what this is about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad you noticed yeah. that. But I don't even want to try and calculate. It's not even wrong though, is it? <laughs> like an eight but, to four pack. Pete Dunne's look. You know, Pete Dunne's look isn't exactly traditional WWE is it it's not but he's got the talent to make it work yeah and in, in my they eyes just, anyway. they're branching out a little bit more though aren't they they're not going for that typical wrestler look at the moment they are branching out and taking risks with a few different looks and stuff so I, I think he could go quite far I really do mm. I think he's, he'd have more of a chance on Smackdown 
Yeah. Or, whatever, mm. or whatever brand that Roman Reigns is not on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's not bashing Roman, that's just fact. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think it'd have more of a chance on SmackDown. But I think if he was to get brought up, I think I can see them putting him on Raw because he's more of a character. So, mm. but again, I wouldn't put him up to the main roster right away anyway, which I've said before in previous ones. I'd, if he was going to be on anything that's not on the UK scene, I'd have him in NXT and carry NXT for a couple of years. So probably the only uh, the only question I've had on on Twitter this week about the show is somebody suggesting something. So I wondered what your thoughts on this would be. But they're building the UK up so much. They're going to have some network shows. Mm-hmm. They're going to do all that. Do you see any way in the future they do a bit of a UK invasion of WWE? Do you see them going down that road? No. no I would. They tried all the invasion things with uh, Nexus and then. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think they will. It's, they've never really booked an invasion angle correctly, have they? So I don't. I can see them doing it again, but I can also see them ballsing it up again. Yeah, because they've got enough guys to make it work. Mm. They do, but like, if you had a but, Pete Dunne led, you know, because Pete Dunne, Seven, and Bate are all sort of in a little group anyway, aren't they? Very strong style. Yeah, so if Pete Dunne led a group in and they did like a proper invasion thing, that could work quite well, couldn't it? If they done an NXT. Yeah, it, could, it would work a lot better. Yeah, because not everyone in the main roster, uh, the fans who watch the main roster, will know they are. So I think, that, but that would put in any NXT would be a good way to introduce them to the people that maybe yeah, watch yeah. stuff on the main roster as well. So yeah. NXT would be the, if they were to do it like that, NXT would be, be the best place for them to do it. So Rachel, obviously you saw both the uh, the Norwich shows and then Raw and SmackDown um, the next two nights. What did you? Uh, what did you think of Raw and SmackDown in comparison? Um, I don't know. I think the crowd was loudest on in Norwich on the Sunday in comparison to Raw and SmackDown, basically combined. I don't know what the hell was going on with the London crowds at all. I agree. But I mean, it yeah, wasn't. I really don't. It was really weird. I've never, I've been going to Raw or SmackDown for the last four years now, and I've never heard the crowd like that ever. They've always been so loud, so hot, and. It's the I'm quietest, it's the quietest dead. English crowd I've ever seen. Yeah, it was really strange, really, really strange. But there was, there was a guy on uh, Twitter who tweeted me some stuff saying it's the worst Raw he's been to. You know? I think there were a couple of good matches. I think the crowd... yeah, don't get me wrong, the card was okay. The, yeah. Some of the matches were really, really good. I'm not bashing the card whatsoever. Um, you know, you saw basically everybody you were expecting to see. There was no like real surprises, but. I mean, it was just the crowd just didn't really feed into it. And there was some really weak chance. It felt a little bit like where it was really hot in WrestleMania, in WrestleMania week when we were all there. The chance worked and they were fresh. They were new, like the Sheamus and Cesaro ones. But here it was just like a bit of a cheap repeat. It felt a bit strange listening to the, the chance here because obviously these people, most of these people probably didn't go to Mania. So they probably wouldn't have understood what some of the other fans were trying to do, I guess. Yeah. Um, I was just saying this, this Aaron who tweeted as, um, was saying normally the UK crowd is insane loud, but they got told that Kurt wasn't coming and the Hardys got a minute of airtime, and the match yeah, ended, yeah. and the matches ended badly. It just did just seemed to kill the atmosphere. It was odd. Yeah, there was no it match. Was, it was strange. But like, there was no match for the Hardys. There was no match for Bailey. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. Hey. Nah. Yeah, was, but he was saying. Well done, was, Adam. He also said, "You'd think, considering they only come here twice a year to do Raw and SmackDown." that actually make the effort. Mm. It was weird. Like, I understand where you're coming from with the Bailey thing. Like it was Bailey and what was it? Mickey James versus Alexa Bliss. Like it would have made more sense for it to be Bliss and Nia Jax versus Bailey and Mickey. Like it didn't really make much sense having them at ringside. I didn't really get that at all. Um, you yeah, just put, put in a tag match instead of having like, yeah. with Nia yeah. versus Mickey with Bailey. Exactly. That would have made more sense for, you know, probably being a bit more invested in the match and stuff. But yeah, like the Hardys got a huge pop when they came out. Like that was probably one of the loudest of the night, as well as Roman Reigns getting booed. Uh, actually, Bra- Braun Strowman got a big reaction, didn't he, Damien? When when we were there, he got a huge one. He wasn't getting booed. He did. But yeah, Braun- it, was, what, as- it was really weird when when Kalisto came out. He got absolutely no, no reaction at all. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so embarrassing, wasn't it? Poor Kalisto. Everybody like- just sat there and just looked at each other. I like. like who is this guy? I think his new look suits him. The stupid techno dance music intro doesn't, but his, mm. uh, his, I like his look. 
looks, a bit, you... like, looks a bit like Darth Maul. <laughs> <laughs> So what what yeah, did you guys strange. think about um, Miz and Ambrose's co GMs? See that came off quite well in for me. I thought that was quite good. I mean, you you kind of saw it coming a little bit when Dean Ambrose came out, but I have to say those two did carry that show. They made it work. They made it more interesting, especially with you know not having Kurt Angle there. That's what I think. And obviously, I got to see Dean Ambrose like three times, so I'm not complaining. I prefer him because he's like a bit of a funny guy now, isn't he? Do you prefer him like that or? I kind of wanted him to go back to be like the mental guy again. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the lunatic. Um, yeah, I want him to go back to that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, last night was funny and he you needed something like that to keep the crowd going. I know it wasn't a lot, but it was definitely, if you didn't have him, it would have been even deader than what it was because it was him and Miz that carried that whole show entirely last night. They were entertaining as hell. But I do miss the edgy side now. I just think, you know, it's not going to be long probably until Miz oh, no, maybe isn't gets... What? He's a bit like a goofy clown now, Ambrose, isn't he? Yeah, but he can really quickly turn that around, I think. Yeah. I think it's just going to take for some, like, a match and he's just going to snap. And that's going to be a really quick way that he can just go heel straight away. I don't think it's going to need to be one of those build-ups like usual with most of the superstars. I think he can quite quickly change back to being just a heel out of nowhere. I'd like to see Ambrose as a heel again, actually. Mm. I don't know if it was, uh, I don't know if it was one of you lot who told me, or I read it somewhere. That they planned on. Did you hear about the original plans for Ambrose introducing him uh, as AJ's boyfriend or something? Yeah, AJ. Yeah. Was it someone who said it in the WhatsApp group or? Thank God, just know. I think it was the WhatsApp group. Yeah, yeah. AJ Lee. Yeah. I re- I re- I've read it somewhere that they were going to introduce him as AJ Lee's. AJ Lee got sectioned, and then she met her boyfriend in, in, <laughs> in the, the institute, and it was going to come back, and it was going to be Dean Ambrose. That would have been fucking brilliant. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... See, why why did they not go with these creative ideas and get fucking Roman Reigns at the top of the card for the next six years? Um, <laughs> Ten years. Twelve I was, years. I, I was being generous. <laughs> but yeah, that, no, that idea would have been fucking brilliant. I'm sold on that. Bring AJ Lee back and let's do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> for just no reason. Yeah. Yeah, let's well, just... yeah. Maybe maybe Ambrose gets sectioned and he meets AJ Lee in there. So. <laughs> and, and while we bring in female wrestlers, Brad, bring Bull Nagano back. And ah, there's a ah, Bull Nagano <laughs> reference. Totally should have seen that coming. <laughs> oh, oh dear God. We, we knew it was coming, didn't we? We did, we did. Was, so. that the only, was that the only reason you started that? No, 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 no. It was only when uh, Chris said bring AJ Lee back. <laughs> 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 it just popped into your brain, did it? He's seen the opportunity and he took it. She's always in my brain. (laughs) (laughs) So what did you think of SmackDown then in comparison to Raw? I'm going to be honest, I haven't watched it yet. Going going back, (gasps) something you're not mentioned actually, Tag Team Turmoil. I know you said the Hardys got one minute, but what did you you guys think of the Tag Team Turmoil? I think the whole thing. I think as soon as they pinned Enzo and Cash, you knew they were going to win it. Yeah. I think if they'd have put maybe... If they'd have put even the club first, then um, then Golden Truth, then Enzo and Cash at the end, you might have had a bit of doubt. But as soon as they beat Enzo and Cash, you knew. You knew so that do they do you think? Do you think they done the the um, order wrong then? So then they had they should have had like Sheamus and Cesaro versus Enzo and Cass as the last two. Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. You know, I don't you, know, you know, because a lot of people in the crowd, you know. The two little friends that Damien made, because he always makes crazy friends when we go to places, they seem to think it might have been Goldust and um, R-Truth for a minute, just because they've been trying to I was hoping it was going to be up. them. Yeah, but you've got to think, yeah. they wouldn't have, have two faces, would you? And the way they're building Shims and Zara, you knew as soon as they beat Enzo and Cass, it was going to be them. Yeah. I mean, I think I think they should have started with maybe um, Luke Gallows and Anderson maybe pinning like, um, Slater and Rhino. Yeah. Or something like that. Um, and then kind of went on from there. And then maybe Enzo and Gas comes out next. And Enzo and Cass beats Gallon Anderson's Anderson. Then, who else was in the match? I'm just looking at thing. thing. Um, then maybe Seamus and Cesaro come out and it goes from there. So maybe she, uh, Seamus and Cesaro then put out Enzo, and maybe Enzo and Cass. Then Seamus and Cesaro on the go dust and our truth last. That could have still worked. Yeah. Because mm. that way you're still putting Seamus and Cesaro over as they're beating two, two teams to get there. So you're still building up as a dominant heel team. 
but yeah, I, I still thought I thought it was okay. I thought maybe the the ending was a bit. Yeah. What did you think of Enzo and Cass being beaten so quick? They got beat so fast, didn't they? That was a bit insulting to them. I have to give them that. I think we're going to start and see the end of Enzo and Cass. I think I said this last week, actually. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think the end's coming now. Mm, just seeing Raw last night, that was that was insanely fast, them getting you know kicked out of that match. I mean, can anyone actually remember a time when Cass lost... Well, Cass was pinned in a, in a tag match. I think that's what Enzo's there for, isn't it? Yeah, but I think that's what they're going to use is, is to split him up. Cass, Cass is never the one to get pinned. It's always Enzo. I know it was a submission this week, but Enzo's always the one who gets the fall against him. To be honest, can you remember the last good Enzo and Cass match? No. Oh, yeah. Def- Not for a while. Yeah, WrestleMania 33 when the Hardys came back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they people get- are- when they came out on Raw so quick but you know everyone was loving that that was a good moment I reckon I've honestly watched their return at Mania about a hundred (laughs) times god excessive yeah that was fucking awesome that is like definitely my favourite moment in the last ten years wow in the last ten years yeah that's big really yeah I can't think of it because that was a massive Hardy Boys fan when they were there you know, back back in say two thousand, two thousand and one, and then obviously I, I wasn't a massive fan when they started splitting them up and they had all the singles runs, but definitely when they first came out. Yeah, they were pretty awesome. I'll give you that. But, I mean, but, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, Rach, what do you make about um, Bray Wyatt beating Dean Ambrose? <sighs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it was so obvious that was going to happen though, because it was a like a non-title match, so we we all knew that it was going to be Bray Wyatt. Mm. So obviously Wyatt's now moved on to Balor, we think, and I can't really see him winning that feud at all, can you? No, I think it's another feud that he's going to lose. I think he'll win a match. I just think he'll lose the feud. Yeah. But I think I still, I still think the matches will be good. But, yeah. Kind of not sure where, where he goes now. I don't know if this, this, is obviously, this isn't a spoiler, but obviously apparently the uh, rehashed uh, plans with uh, Braun being injured now are going to be Reigns versus Wyatt. Um, Brock versus Balor at Great Balls of Fire. Mm. <laughs> you just wanted to say the title, didn't you, really, there? Pretty much. I think I think they were going to build in towards Balor and Brock at some point anyway. Yeah. Um, and it'll be quite an interesting match because Balor will get thrown about the place. Yeah. So watch that shoulder, please. Don't injure yourself. <laughs> yeah, but Brock... Bro- <laughs> Brock's not the uh, softest of people, is he? <laughs> no, but I still, I still think the match will be good. But I'm, I'm not um, optimistic about Balor's shoulder going into that match. No, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, Reigns Wyatt, something we've seen before. They've had good matches, so it'll be interesting to see them again. But it's something we have seen before, so it's yeah, see where it goes. Yeah. It's kind of tough to get a bit excited about what's coming up, isn't it? Because there's not, a, you know, there's not a huge amount of. It kind I'm of ex- feels feels I'm like excited. it's just pat, like meandering along. I'm excited for the UK end, scene. Yeah, no, exactly. I think. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I still think there's a lot of good things in WWE. There's a lot of good performers and a lot of good wrestlers that have arguably got, I say, arguably got the best talent roster that they've ever had. It's the booking that that hurts them. I was going to say, why do you think, out of all their talent they've got, why do you think the crowd is more interested in a beach ball? Well, oh, <laughs> don't even ask me that question. How annoying was that? That was so frustrating. Don't I find it really disrespectful, actually, to the wrestlers in the ring. I mean, whose match was it? It was the women, wasn't it? it, was it was Sasha, I think, again. Wasn't Sasha it? and Alicia Fox, wasn't it? Don't get me wrong, I'm not Alicia Fox's biggest fan, but that was oh, highly insulting. Alicia Fox. Oh, I don't need to do that. What Sorry. was it? It was balloons, wasn't it? Fucking it's red balloons. balloons. Yeah. Out. So obnoxious. It really pissed me off. I swear to uh, literally. But there's nothing you can like they can do about it. People are just gonna sneak these sorts of things in just to get attention, but people just need to not encourage it. It's just it just wound me up. So, that, I don't that, know. that type of thing, like the beach ball thing in Orlando as well. We used to there was beach balls in at the show in Raw too. Yeah. In London. Yeah, there was a couple of beach balls, I just, yeah. I just but it was mainly balloons. I just find it disrespectful. It is. 
especially um, especially commenting on the one in Orlando because I was there and so. But there's a really really good match happening with Neville and um, it was Jack Gallagher, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 There's a really really good match happening there, and these people are more interested in the baseball. I just find that really disrespectful to the guys who are in the ring. I've, I've said that on this podcast before. They're busting their asses off for you, and then there's these people blowing up fucking beach balls and just no. Yeah, it's just not necessary. I mean, if they're, they're coming to the so, wrong show, if they think that that's funny yeah. and entertaining, it's really not. And it's it's annoying for people that actually like watching wrestling and pay a lot yeah. of money to go. I mean, I'm um, I'm all for going, having a good time, chanting things and whatever, but be respectful to the guys that are actually really in the good. ring as well. Yeah. See, even with the beach balls, I mean, one's fun. Two, yeah. uh, three is piss taken, you know? Mm. But then in Orlando, there was a lot more than three. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. One's fun. It's great. Yeah. Get it passed around. Try and get it around the whole building. Stewards will get it. Bins it. You know, over and done with. But the amount what was there was ridiculous. Do you not think if the show was better, they wouldn't do it? Yes. But why? Does it, yes, yeah. no. But why are you going with the intention to spoil it? For people, you're like that's just stupid. People are purposely thinking, "Oh, let's pack beach balls and let's bring a packet of balloons to just ruin other people's evening who are there to, you know, watch whatever the show is." Yes, it may not be the, the best, but that's not for them, not for anybody else to decide. Really, to just spoil it for other people, that's not okay. Exactly. If you're going with a, with a beach ball, you're going with intent to be a dick. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Jericho Jer- Jer- right. didn't help though, did he? No, no he really didn't. <laughs> Jericho's a dick. <laughs> and is it and and is it is it pro wrestling tees who've got the Beach Ball Mania t shirts out? Oh god, yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> At least we've got a new chant from the weekend. At least, you know, the ten and the one full chance. Now we've now got a new better chant. Dan! Dan! Dan <laughs> That Jesus will never get old. I can live with that. Just, above tri- the just one Triple fall. H trying to understand it. That was the funniest thing of the weekend. Triple H trying to understand. Bring back what the Dan. hell? Bring back Dan. Dan. Bring back Dan. <laughs> the best bit was Triple H coming out going, can you explain it? And the crowd going, Alan Dan. Partridge. Dan. <laughs> Just the explanation makes no sense to him. <laughs> it's like, I don't know who that is. He didn't understand get. the accents at all. Even when we was all chanting like, we want mania and stuff. He was like, really having to ha- listen hard to that. <laughs> that was entertaining. Yeah. It was, again, good to see Triple H to that show as well. That was a really good surprise, actually. He was, really always gonna, he was always going to be there. I, I don't know, he didn't gonna... come out for the second night, though. Yeah, but he was always going to show up. It, you know, it, 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 I mean, he was there in Blackpool, wasn't he, behind the scenes, but and he did his uh, introduction. Mm. Yeah, it's good, it's good. Um, well, like I was saying to Chris, they did five shows that night. <laughs> that was incredible. And obviously Triple H chose to be in Norwich out of all five. Yeah, because they had like a, there was a Raw house show, a SmackDown house show, any two NXT house shows, and then the the UK one. Was the NXT house shows in America? Yes. Right. But still, five WWE shows and Triple H chose to be in Norwich. Norwich. <laughs> Norwich. <laughs> I think he really cares about places. about the UK. Um, yeah, he I really think does. He, I don't. I won't say he really cares about the UK. I think he really cares about the UK Championship because yeah. it's, because it's his baby. Yeah. I think I think the UK Championship is more Regal's baby. Obviously, it's yep. got tri- it's got Triple H's backing, obviously, but but you think it's the, how many how many house shows do they do a week in America? So he's not going to be at the NXT ones now. This is the first time they've done a UK show. Oh yeah, since, I mean, since the UK Championship, so he's going to be he's going to be here. He's he's going to be where, here because he yep. wants to make sure it takes off and it goes well and everything like that. So yeah, I, I totally get that as well. But I think. Uh, this being pushed by Regal because he's been in Triple H's year as well. So, so yeah. I, who who cares? He was here. Woohoo! Loved it. I think <laughs> m- m- most gambles they do tend to pay off really well. Yeah, let's hope they just gamble with a mania in London or something next. Yeah. Like you said uh, earlier, Chris, um, on the WhatsApp group, it's they're not gonna they're not gonna just jump straight in to a mania. Yeah, test the water first. They'll do a summer slam or something. What was the last one? Was it Insurrection 2003 or something? Yeah, but that was just that was wasn't even a proper pay per view, really, was no, it? No, but it was technically a pay per view. I'm saying it was, yeah, yeah. So it's the last pay per view they've done. Um, so I think and they, they picked need... the crappiest place to do it. Where was it? Newcastle. 
<laughs> no, no, for the the arena, it's tiny. Mm. I think it's maybe ten thousand max. Ten. The, the ten. 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 Oh, don't, don't start. Sorry, nine thousand. Nine thousand max. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's no. really not a big arena, so. But yeah, I think test the water out though. I would say test it out with the SummerSlam first and see what that does. I personally think that that would sell it quick, well quicker than any other WrestleMania, even in the states. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd even a, lot, a lot of them don't sell out actually. So. I'd even say try it with a, a smaller one, and then and then have a SummerSlam. What test it with a backlash or something first, and maybe yeah, yeah. At, at the well, maybe not the O2 because the crowd shit. Do it in Glasgow. Um, <laughs> Do it at the Hydro. Go to the Hydro. Pay per views at the Hydro. I think Manchester would be a good shout, to be fair. Yeah, cause Cause it's, it's pretty easy for everyone to get to. Yeah, and it's Look, great. Let's idea. just do it in Bristol. It'll be fine. So, in, a, in a field full of combine harvesters. You get, <laughs> you know, get 100,000 people in one of our fields. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, right, we, should, we probably should bring this, this to a close, really. So, uh, we'll know. obviously next week on this podcast, we'll be doing our Backlash preview show. So we'll have a few uh, few matches to go through then. So I think it's AJ and Kevin Owens. For the US title, yeah. And it's uh, obviously Randy and Jinder. Jinder. Which, which Jinder might not be hindered. Jinder, Jinder. Huh. What's, uh, what's Sami Zayn doing? Is he going to be going against Corbin? Corbin, by the looks of it, yeah. yeah. So to be fair, those three matches don't sound too bad. But to be fair... I thought SmackDown really added towards the, those matches as well with like, like, the six-man tag, which, which was, I thought was really good. Yeah. Um, and obviously they the put they put Jinder over Otter in there as well, so. Which which probably means that Jinder's not winning. Yeah, but they put him over the week before the the, the like the go home show, so it could it could still be where Orton gets the, the upper hand next week and then Jinder wins it. Well, yeah, yeah. So still got a week to go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we but can yeah, cover all this. Uh, we can cover all this in next week's show. So, yeah. uh, so, if anybody's got any comments for us or any feedback, or especially any other UK promotions that we might have missed, um, they can tweet us at TSO underscore podcast. They can go on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the social oddities podcast, or go on our website at the social oddities.co.uk. They can get in touch, send us questions, comments, feedback, and we will talk about it next week along with our backlash preview. So, uh, yeah, until next week, everybody. Say bye for now. Bye. Bye. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Don't forget to tune in next time for more fighting talk. Catch you next time. <laughs>